Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, Danny Danon, will deliver a brief statement today on the one-year anniversary of the October 7th terrorist attacks. He will take your questions afterwards. If you are called to ask a question, please remember to state your name and your news outlet. Thank you. Good afternoon. October 7 wasn't just another dark day in Jewish history. It was our worst nightmare realized. Hamas terrorists invaded our communities in order to massacre, rape, and kidnap our brothers and sisters. They showed no mercy, slaughtering men, women, and children, ripping apart families, and destroying entire communities. Today, at 3 p.m., we are holding a memorial for the victims here at the United Nations, an institution that has failed us time and time again. When the massacre of October 7 unfolded, the UN refused to act. It couldn't find the most basic morality to condemn one condemnation of the brutal murder of innocent civilians, and it could not bring itself to call out the atrocities for what they were. Instead of standing with the innocent, this institution remained silent. When it finally found its voice, it did not speak for justice. It chose to vilify us, the country fighting to protect its people from the monsters who massacred us. The UN has failed in its most basic mandate to protect the innocent and condemn evil. We are following what's happening in Israel. Earlier today, we intercepted a ballistic missile that uh, was launched from Yemen at our civilians in the center of Israel. And we will continue to monitor what's happening. We continue to fight in multiple fronts. We are deploying all necessary capabilities against our enemies, both in defense and offense. And I can tell Iran and their proxies, they should know. We will decide when and where, but there will be a response. There will be a response. We will ensure that all those who seek to destroy us will pay the price for the actions. Thank you. Ambassador Sean Nichols from Reuters. Um, has, Ira has Israel decided when and where to strike back against Iran? We are debating it, and the cabinet met and will continue to meet. We will choose the exact location and the way of the response. But it will happen. It will take place. The event this afternoon, um, did you invite the Secretary General or any other UN officials to attend? We, we invited ambassadors and we expect the participation of the dozens of your ambassadors. You know that the situation with the SG, uh, I would say, is sensitive. Even though we appreciate the video he put forward before October 7th, it was well received uh, in Israel. But the last year was, was hard. It was hard because we felt that uh, Israel is not treated the way it should be treated and we were disappointed uh, during that year. And then Ambassador can you just clarify, has he been PNG by Israel? Excuse me? Has he been made persona non grata by Israel? So th there was a statement made, uh, and as I said earlier, we will evaluate the relationship. We are here at the UN, we work with the UN agencies, uh, but we were disappointed. Ambassador, it's Pamela Falk from US News. Many of the families today are asking for the release of hostages. Many countries are asking for the release of their hostages. What's your message about any potential deal to get, make that happen? So we will have families today with us at the event, and we will tell them that we will not give up. We will not give up on their family members. Uh, we will continue to negotiate for a ceasefire, and at the same time, we will apply more pressure. We know that there were some uh, issues with uh, Mr. Sinwar, who is hiding in the tunnels. Uh, but we hope that we will be able to continue the negotiations with the support of those countries who are ending the negotiations. Your Excellency, Carmen Maria Rodriguez of America TV. This is speculation, but this could happen, we hope. If the hostages would be released, how would Jerusalem react? Well, that would be a, a miracle, and I think it, it will end um, our activities in Gaza. So basically, it, it can happen tomorrow morning if Hamas would release the hostages. 
but uh, unfortunately I'm not optimistic uh, about that taking place, no, knowing the character that we are dealing with uh, and what's happening now in Gaza. I'm not optimistic that all of a sudden Hamas will decide to release the hostages. I also encourage you all to visit an exhibition that we are going to open uh, today at uh, 1.30 p.m. Uh, on level one. It will show uh, pictures uh, of people who lost their lives, of victims that uh, died on October 7th. Yes, please. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I'm Camilia Antekhobifar, Chief Editor of the Independent Persian. There is lots of rumors circulated in Persian media that Ismail Qani, the chief commander of the Quds Force, has been in Lebanon during this to strike Israel done in southern suburb. Uh, th does it any information, intelligence information from the Israeli side, they can confirm he's present in Lebanon? Thank you. So I cannot give specific about this individual, but I will say that uh, if you are a bad guy and you're hanging around with terrorists, uh, expect the worst news to come. So I don't know about this gentleman, but I can tell you about other Iranians who were involved in terror activities uh, in uh, Lebanon uh, who were hurt because they were plotting to attack us. So I know that in Iran they pay a lot of attention to this gentleman, but uh, it's up to them to find out what happened to him. Thank you very much. Thank you. If I can follow, he is the chief commander of the Quds Force. So there is no information of him if he has been visited Lebanon? So uh, I think that question should be directed to the Iranian ambassador. Thank you.